Hello everyone, Ivy here. This week's podcast is entitled The Hill We Climb, episode 55. First of all, an introduction. This week's podcast, as I said, is entitled The Hill We Climb, which is the poem that Amanda Gorman recited at the inauguration of Joe Biden as the President of the USA and Kamala Harris as the Vice President. I, like many people, was very impressed with that recital and I had no hesitation to pre-order her book last year. It was delayed by a few weeks, but I was more than happy to obtain that beautiful publication towards the end of 2021. I bought the audible version and to hear Amanda herself recite her poems makes it very special to me. The book, in any case, and if you want to know, is called Call Us What We Carry. Amanda Gorman is an American poet and activist from Los Angeles, California. Amanda's work focuses on issues of oppression, feminism, race and marginalisation, as well as the African diaspora. Amanda Gorman is the first person to be named National Youth Poet Laureate. I decided to use the poem as a backdrop for this week's podcast and in particular look at how the British royal family and its various associates in crime and the Sussexes and their global support network navigate these shark infested royal waters every day and the reasons why we will be here every day and night for a lifetime. First of all, I will read out the whole poem and then use extracts from the poem to illustrate actions of certain groups, including the Sussexes and also the global support base approach the sentiment expressed in a particular section of the poem. So here is the hill we climb in full. When day comes, we ask ourselves, Where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother, can dream of becoming president, only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine. But that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose. To compose a country committed to all cultures, colours, characters and conditions of man. And so... We lift our gazes, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide, because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms, so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again 
so division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. If we are to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it. Would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption we feared at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So, while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. A country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens, but one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy in change, our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left, with every breath from my bronzed pounded chest. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold-limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the winds swept north, east where our forefathers first realised revolution. We will rise from the lake rinsed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun-baked south. We will rebuild, reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country. Our people, diverse and beautiful, will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we are brave enough to see it. If only we are brave enough to be it. End of that poem. Let's go on with the rest of this article. Let's talk about facts. The squad has gone from being considered as bots through a variety of comical names, to have ascended now to be described and seen as a threat in royal circles. No longer are we dismissed out of hand. 
No longer do any of the British royal family and associates laugh about us now. We know we must be getting under their skin when they start to tell lies about us and when they say our names with venom and when they feel so bold to speak about us in such terms that make it clear. They are no longer laughing now. The Royal Associates Playbook that has been and continues to be used against the Sussexes, the Duchess of Sussex in particular, is now starting to be used on the squad. Tell us how you all belong to the same gang. Tell us how you all belong to the same cult, without having to do anything different to what you have been doing for years, as part of the job of being connected to UK media in any form. You pick a target and swarm in with your toxins. Your support base does the same with any charity that is regarded as having Sussex support. A really good look, especially when none of the British royal family itself have ever spoken out against such antics done in their name. Yet they have items removed from the internet or other forms of media within hours. If the content is not positive in terms of any senior royal, particularly the next two in line for the throne. The UK royals have spoken out in the past about hair extensions though, and likewise entries in the society magazine when it does not give enough glow up for the people or person concerned. Apparently, content like that is considered serious. Therefore, swift action is taken to rewrite history or by removing the said item completely. A magic wand is waved and all of a sudden, there is nothing to see here. Article 8 came in quite handy for one member of the British Royal Family in recent years. Yet the same British Royal Family is quite happy now to join forces with the UK government and to withdraw from an International Human Rights Act and have a Bill of Rights only for the UK. I am assuming that there will be special rules for some people, as per usual, but we will see. The main themes of the hill we climb are hope, birthright and legacy, and diversity and unity seems apt wherever one is based in the world. I believe that on the whole, all Sussex supporters consider the, those elements to be under threat to varying degrees in the locations where we all currently reside. In fact, it is applicable to any society that oppresses any part of its population and regards them as a lesser class than the other groups in society and treats them differently to others who also live in the same nation. Despite the mantra that all are treated the same under the law, we all know that is not the case. And in the same way, not everyone has access to or is afforded the same rights under the same piece of legislation. Responses to certain situations, often based on ethnic origin and skin colour, determine how certain nations respond to the crisis in front of them. A few examples of groups have good reason to be concerned about birthright and legacy, along with diversity and unity. People of colour all around the world have justified cause to be concerned about those same topics. But we have faith in ourselves and what we can do to be able to live in this world every day and navigate life in such a way that we will leave the world better than we found it. Hope is always there. And we are confident that there are powers beyond the understanding of some regimes and groups that will bring about a much more inclusive understanding about life and how we move forward on this planet.
an extract from the poem again. The promise of hope is alluded to in the opening line when Amanda questions where light can be found in what seems to be a period of unending darkness. She quickly answers the questions with the promise of a dawn. Amanda's poem is very much concerned with America as a birthright and with being American as being a state of having inherited certain ideals and burdens from the country's founders. The language used to describe America itself suggests that it is almost a living thing, something that can be bruised, but has not yet been destroyed. It can be argued that the UK is bruised, and it is clear that only certain sections of society are cared for when they become bruised, and the rest of the population are left to get on with it and find ways to heal their wounds, or ignore them completely and get up and battle to get through another day, regardless of how one may be feeling. A sensible nation eventually realises that you can only back a person into a corner for so long. One day, they will find the strength and fight through their pain in an effort to achieve a better standard of life. The strength that a maligned and hurt individual is experiencing at the hands of uncaring people is much stronger than a healthy, happy individual and is always delivered in a powerful way. All nations, beware of how you treat your citizens. We need to recognise and respect all people and come together to bring about a sea of change for the better. Living in a toxic environment day after day, week after week or year after year is not the way forward. Whether that applies to family dynamics or a country, at some point boundaries will need to be created to allow space for people to heal and find a more conducive environment to try to simply exist in peace. Another extract. Country may not be truly committed to people of all cultures and colours, characters and conditions. It is possible that it can become such a country if violent arms are laid down and loving arms are extended. The war on people of all cultures and colours needs to be acknowledged and a change in approach explored. In the UK, the media is toxic every single day, not least because hate sells and more money is made by every programme or news item slanted against a particular section of society that the media barons wish to see portrayed in a particular way. The end result is that type of toxicity is fed into every home in the nation and in nations with similar media barons who have an agenda, usually unwritten, but the results are there to see. The brand is clear and the golden chains that bind them to another similar entity in other nations give it the weight. And in their eyes, the justification to continue the love of the dollar or the pound or any nation's currency will eventually destroy itself if there is no other counterbalance of a range of priorities in life. On a personal level, I choose to not read or listen to the juggernaut of negative and toxic news on my TV or radio systems. I don't read any newspaper in the UK now. Because even what used to be quality news publications have now succumbed to the honeypot of hate drilled into the minds of the population every day. Media personnel used to report in an impartial way about real news. Now they are well-known personalities in their own right and the new status has gone to their heads 
so much so the way they report on things is so toxic and clearly aimed at certain sections of society but done confident in the knowledge that their media barons approve of this approach. By blocking them all out of my day-to-day -day life and ensuring that none of them enter any timeline on any social media platform, I feel the increased strength to fight the good fight in a different way. I use the power of speech. I realise that I am not even a blip on their landscape, but like all the squad media teams who have started platforms these last five years are making a difference. Where once there was only one school of thought and approach being portrayed. We are definitely making a difference and we know by their metaphorical frothing at the mouth they do most days now compared to the ridicule that was directed at us in 2017. Never ever forget the two brave women who stepped forward into this lion's den in 2017 and told the world all the lies and actions going on in a media frenzy by friends of the UK royal family will no longer be met in silence. The ladies made it clear that every lie would be challenged and that in the case of the UK, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, was not alone and that there, were, there was an army of people who recognised themselves in her and from now on, all those involved in that activity to destroy a black woman for daring to step into what was deemed a white space were put on warning that they were no longer dealing with one woman in a new country, but a whole army of people around the world who lived that kind of existence every day in their respective living spaces. Tina and Michelle stepped forward and took all the poison arrows and the threats and got up each time, pulled out each arrow and told the haters, we are going nowhere. Megan is not alone. Over time, very quickly in fact, we could see how Harry, the Duke of Sussex, stood by his wife's side and protected her and defended her against all comers with their hatred and racism, to name but just two of the toxins in play. Pretty soon, Harry was very clear that there was a growing support network and it was global and that he and his wife and eventually his own family were covered and protected. It is as a stronger movement now because each of us know exactly how it feels to be treated differently and be gaslighted every day and we empathised with Megan. Her plight was made worse because it was on a public platform and she was up against a 1,000 year old institution and government and media, both TV and printed, and the aristocracy and the police. So no matter how strong we are now, we must never forget it started out by two brave ladies watching this cruelty and evil increase against one person and treated like a slave. And Tina and Michelle put themselves in the line of fire and said no more. The squad is led by no one and we do not all get along. But the unifying tie that we have is to protect the Sussexes and to challenge lies and misinformation and disinformation. The royal propaganda does not fly with us and because of our global network, and time zones, we provide cover 24 seven. Thank you, Tina and Michelle, for sowing the seeds for this now powerful movement for good that continues to grow and now raises telephone number size charitable funds within a few weeks, each time one is announced. All funds go direct to the charities concerned 
we merely promote the fundraiser. Sussex Squad is a peace-loving group of people based around the world and its numbers grow each day. With each toxic act carried out by those who hate, their hearts are full of hate, in fact. We join arms across the world, as in Amanda's poem, and use love and respect to provide positive outcomes and to help those who are vulnerable and in need. Some are out there focused on earning more and more income from inciting hatred. At least one individual from a toxic family is seemingly trying to make a career out of destroying his brother. I see no other activity being done for the benefit of the people of the UK or any other nation that he wishes to cover. I see lots of launches of things and the bombardment of and by the propaganda teams to let the world know. But in the last 20 years, I have yet to see one completed project. Not one. Where there was progress made, it was when the brother that is treated like a traitor now was involved in that project. Truth be known, he did all the work, because since he has moved out and got a new job and brought a home, he is still producing outcome-focused project with huge successes. I see no completion of anything by those left behind. The ribbon cutting and robotic smiles are in full swing. The copying and pasting of the irrelevant brother and his wife is now comedic to the global audience and they only know about it because they know about the philanthropic work of the target for the ire of the UK nation, in particular the UK royal family and its aristocracy. It used to be cringeworthy, but now it's just funny. Instead of deciding on your own identity and writing a credible workforce plan for the future of the monarchy, which in turn would guide activities in the future with the workforce you have, you are intent on destroying the couple who, if they continue to succeed, highlights how irrelevant the British royal family is, uh, is. And actually, there is no place for any royal family in any modern society. It is naive to believe that both of you, dressing the same and visiting places the successful couples have visited, and copying mannerisms and decor, etc., it would be better to develop your own identity and blueprint and move forward with that. Use your propaganda media to promote your good works with measurable outcomes rather than use them like weapons of mass destruction against a couple and their children who are out here doing good in the world and do not cost UK taxpayers anything. Copying and pasting the successful couple will not bring you the glory you think. Quite the opposite reactions are occurring worldwide. An extract. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. Sussex supporters wade through muddy waters every day. So doing similar for the Sussexes is natural. We wade through the sea of toxins sent there and our way, and we deal with it, and we get on with being forces for change in the world. While some nations are devoting their times to turning back the clock in terms of legislation and how they view certain groups of the population, a higher power will create a rebalancing held by the feet on the ground, who will work actively to overturn certain decisions and actions via the ballot box. Peace is the way forward, and peaceful activities 
will overcome. Another quote. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace and the norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. Yes, some nations are broken, but they are not decimated. The work goes on until they are whole again. Another quote. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colours, characters and conditions of man. And so we lift our gazes, not to who stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. These are the goals. We strive to move forward together. It is the only way true peace and justice will occur. Until then, we strive towards it by positive actions. A quote. We lay down our arms so that we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to no one and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped. End of that quote. And I say, Amen to this. Let it be so indeed. Always have hope in your heart and actions. Another quote, that even as we tired, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together, victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. An additional quote, scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. End of quote. Our Duchess has said a similar phrase, describing it as a philosophy and a mantra to follow in life. While some people around you deliberately try to whip up drama and look for any signs of how you might react to their manufactured news and deliberately created distraction tactics to take heat off others. Nothing aggravates people like that more than to ignore their antics and treat it like background noise. And to sit under your virtual tree, minding your business, and let the crabs in a bucket try to crawl over each other to get out of that bucket. And to join in the clowns on the beach, claiming to be experts at this and that. When all the time the tide is coming in, and none of them have noticed. Whether you are one of the crabs in a bucket or other eager to be with the carnival of clowns who believe that they are relevant and fool themselves into thinking that they would be employed by anyone with a shred of moral fibre and ethics. This same group prancing on the beach looking for relevance by manufacturing so-called expert opinion based on their dream state than any reality that normal people reside in, and when called out for their behaviour, they complain about the stress caused to them for a short period, and how traumatising it is to lose one's eyelashes due to stress. No thought to the five years and counting to the stress needlessly inflicted upon someone who they considered to be a threat to their way of life and who they targeted in the most cruel way, and joined up with others to seek and destroy their target. This same group had the caucasity to refer to the place that Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, came from in the USA as being a ghetto, 
not recognising the way the various clusters of people hang on to and wish to be publicly known as being well in with the UK monarchy, along with the way they ganged up on the Duchess of Sussex and created stress and drama around her on every media platform. No concern about the welfare or health of the Duchess. No regard for the various charities and professional organisations that they claim to be figureheads for, while treating the Duchess of Sussex like something underneath their shoes. Meghan was told that she was not an employee and therefore not entitled to any medical intervention, despite being informed of her suicidal ideation. Meghan was not allocated a budget when she married into the British royal family and therefore met all of her expenses herself, unlike every other person who married into that institution. Tabloid personnel had regular dialogue with Royal HR and were informed of confidential information pertaining about the Duchess of Sussex's health and rather than back down from this coordinated hate campaign, they doubled down on the stress-inducing behaviour, knowing that the Duchess was teetering on the edge of suicide. Yet, we have so much time in the press supporting one of their own about how stressful it was and has been for being called out for lying and manufacturing statements in order to collect £300. The way these people are prepared to sell their soul just to be part of the gang that tries to bring down the Duchess of Sussex. Someone who, even in their dreams, none of that pack could even qualify to walk in the dust clouds Meghan leaves behind to lead a philanthropic life. You want to know how things can be put in perspective? One from the Carnival of Clowns bleated on about losing sleep and feeling stressed, so much so her eyelashes fell out apparently. Same individual who also lost her means of employment by one of the USA networks because of the incident regarding lies and being caught out. The way UK media came from under their respective stones to plead and to expect sympathy for the individual from their gang, who had been found out, was comical. One person lost a few eyelashes and the Duchess lost a baby. I know right-minded people from anywhere in the world including parts of the UK, can see the huge difference. I spoke about the media coverage of the Duchess of Sussex's miscarriage in a podcast that year. The coverage provided nothing but shame to the UK to respond for days with nothing but evil and cruel articles. It takes a certain type of individual to sink that low the fact it was mainly female journalists who are the most toxic towards Meghan speaks volumes. And I stated it in that podcast so that there is always a record. I stand by what I said. The coverage over the loss of an eyelash in comparison to the loss of a baby, both caused by stress, after what the UK media did and continue to do in the content of their reporting of the only person of colour in the royal family, I have zero interest in any losses that one of that media group incurred, money or eyelashes, please. As always, royal family and their associates slow dance in their bubble, riding roughshod over people and are totally oblivious and uncaring about what is going on and fail to notice that the room that they are occupying, prancing about to making themselves the centre of every story, usually when there is another launch of yet a product or a project, which most likely takes 10 years before we hear any more about it and most likely will run through to form 
and produce a set of questions that will take another 10 years to find the answers to. Fail to notice that there are flames approaching their feet. Rural reporters think most of the UK population has had 10 years or more of memory loss. Rural family back in those halcyon days and the way that they spoke about certain members of the royal family in terms of the articles that they wrote it's worth taking a look go back pick any year it won't matter the message being sold for those 10 years is the complete opposite to what is written about the same individuals today it appears if one sells their soul they receive good press in the uk it means zero outside of the UK, but carry on. The UK is still in that slow dance analogy, but is only a grain of sand in the wider world. That wider world is changing as the environment is changing. Most are choosing to re recognise those shifting sands, but the UK remain in the small group that believes they can sell sand to people who live in a desert. And they have a media that sells that version of events as and when required, as long as each benefits in some way. A few short quotes. While democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. A country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation. Because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with. We will rebuild, reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful. We'll emerge battered and beautiful. To bring this podcast to a close, I have done a brief summary, looking at the three main themes, and I have given examples of podcasts that are applicable to that particular theme. There are more, but I've just given a few just as a starter. So the main themes. Hope is one of the key themes of Amanda Gorman's The Hill We Climb. Perhaps the defining theme of the whole poem the promise of hope, is alluded to in the opening line when Amanda questions where light can be found in what seems to be a period of unending darkness. She quickly answers the question with the promise of a new dawn. And three podcasts that I have put here under this section is I Have a Dream, that ship sailed, bro. The Lost Souls of Windsor. Second theme, birthright and legacy. Amanda's poem is very much concerned with America as birthright and with being American as being a state of having inherited certain ideals and burdens from the country's founders. The language used to describe America itself suggests that it is almost a living thing, something that can be bruised, but has not yet been destroyed. The examples I have listed 
is the podcast entitled The Dukes of Sussex and also A Thousand Years of UK Monarchy. I added additional podcasts because of the element where Amanda talks about the hill we climb. All nations today need to acknowledge the past, good and bad, which they inherit and repair what needs improving. And the podcasts I've listed are Let's Talk About Reparation, the three-part series, The Business of Royal Propaganda, Blurred Lines Between Monarchy and Government, You Do Not Know What You Have Until It's Gone, and Slow Dancing in a Burning Room. Under the third theme, Unity and Diversity, I have listed the following podcasts. Seven Stages of Grief. Response from freed slave to former master. California princess to UK Cinderella to global princess. Coercive control across borders. The psychology of resentment. Herd mentality. Are we programmed? As usual, there is more information in the article. It will be up on the website in about 24 hours and I will post on YouTube to let you know when it is there and put the direct link to it. Hope you found that interesting and using a slightly different approach this week. We have used poetry before, but not for a while. That's all for this week. Speak to you all in the comments and see you all next weekend for the next podcast. Bye for now. Bye from Ivy. Bye.